الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد و علی علی و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد احب تفلا a question was asked and this is a common question and has been asked to the ulama uh, many times and there is a lot of information out there and so I advise my brothers and sisters to uh, research this question which is very easy to research because there is so many times that the scholars have been asked questions which are fur'in upon this question which questions which branch out from this very question and this is a question related to the uh, mahram the guardian for a woman and in this situation uh, someone in, in this particular question someone asked you know my parents are arafida shia so that means that they reject the sahaba to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam and they make takfir of the sahaba to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam radiyallahu ta'ala anhu ajma'in and this is in total opposition to the aqidah or creed of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and is a total negation of important usul or foundation principles of ahl sunnati wal jama'ah and in fact it is a negation of what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded and tabarak wa ta'ala he has uh, praised the sahaba to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the quran radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in and he has chosen them radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in to be the companions of the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and part of the rafida the rejectors creed is that they make takfir and they claim that aisha radiyallahu ta'ala anha uh, is uh, was a an adulteress uh, they slander and they attack some of the most beloved of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation so there's a big difference in creed and there's a big difference in methodology and to such an extent we would say that there's a difference in religion that in fact their sources are so far from the sources of ahl sunnati wal jamaa with that being the case ahabu tafila it's not just a matter of bid'a but this is a matter of bid'a mukaffara bid'a which takes you out of the fold of islam so therefore they are not even ahl kitab those people who hold this type of creed in belief that they do not even fit under the people uh, of the book meaning the jews and the christians who are practicing that they for a muslim man he can marry a, a, a woman from ahl kitab but he cannot marry a rafida a rafidiya you know a, a woman who has this uh, this creed uh, the creed of the rafida and with that being the case of habatifilla that right there negates the guardianship for the woman so for example a woman who was raised as a shi'i you know a shi'i rafida i'm not talking about some other branch of shi'ism that may be in the fold of islam but may be uh, have bid'a obviously has bid'a that in a situation like this then due to the and and then her embracing uh islam or embracing uh embracing islam leaving off that belief and becoming quote unquote a sunni muslim meaning that they follow they believe in the book of allah and the sunnah of the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so in a case like this then the woman now she is in a position and more often than not wishes to get married under those circumstances then she requires a guardian her rafidi shia father may allah guide us in them uh is not does not suffice being in a guardian he is not ahlan he is not a person who can be in guardian for her so in this situation similar to the way uh, a muslim a muslima a new muslima who was a christian or a jew or a buddhist or whatever that their father would not have the guardianship there's nothing wrong with respecting the father and treating him with kindness and being respectful because he's still given his way his daughter and he does not abide by islamic rules he doesn't understand that so you can respect him you can even ask him uh for her hand in marriage if the, if that's the kind of relationship if he is an open person to, to even talking about these things 
but that is not at all a requirement, nor is it uh, sufficient. He is not her guardian. So the guardian in that situation would be, uh, if you're in a minority Muslim community, it would be the imam of the community, or if there's an Islamic uh, markas, like a, an institute, which has, uh, you know, some sort of uh, local authority. More often than not, we don't have many of those in America. So we have usually the local masjid and the imam can be the wali or the wakil, the guardian, you know, that's appointed, or he can appoint someone. And if a sister is even in a rarer situation than that, then she can appoint and ask a trustworthy brother from the community. However, uh, it's better to go through those authorities because often what we've seen over the many, many years of experience, uh, you know, we've seen many abusive situations and sometimes where the brothers will marry the sister off to his boy, you know, that who he's, who he's close with, who may not be a person even of sound character and righteousness and good faith and good conduct, but rather he could be an abusive person, but he's just good friends with the guardian. So you need a good, trustworthy guardian who, who takes that responsibility uh, serious. So I hope that that is something which can shed light on this very important point. And we ask Allah to forgive us of our many countless, seems as if it's countless sins, because we just can't even begin to count all the sins, nor can we count all the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us and favored us with another time, another moment to talk about Islam. So I'm very thankful for this opportunity to even talk about Islam that in hopes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive me for my many sins and my many uh, shortcomings. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with the bad ala sunnah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because we see how difficult it can be to tamasik be kitabi wa sunnah. And especially I find that now that I've come to the end of my short stay here in America, my short vacation, and I see how difficult as a Muslim minority, it's a reminder because I've been in Saudi Arabia for so long, sheltered, how difficult it can be to just practice your deen in general and more specifically practice the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. It seems as if there's no, sometimes there's no support and there's no uh, uh, support from your brothers and sisters in, in many places and it can be very difficult to find that true Islamic brotherhood and sisterhood which you need in order to remind one another, in order to keep one another grounded and to keep one another faithful. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.